What is going on everyone? I hope you were all having a fantastic day. So earlier this week, we talked about how you can get started with investing with just $100. And after looking at some of the feedback from that video, it looks like you all really loved it and you wanna know more about how you can actually pick your first stocks. I mean, let's be honest, the stock market can be extremely intimidating for a number of reasons. And it seems like every day there are new articles and videos coming out about what stocks you should buy right now. But looking at someone else's portfolio and copying it exactly is not really investing. So today let's look at the actual process that I use to pick out undervalued companies that have high potential to appreciate in value over time. And we'll talk about how to remove all the headaches and confusion when you are ready to buy your first stock. So let's jump right into it. So like I said, the stock market can be extremely confusing and intimidating, and I first want you to know that that is completely normal and it is okay to feel that way. The fundamentals of investing for long-term and diversifying yourself seem simple on paper, but when it comes to actually putting your money on the line and investing in a company, it is a whole different process instead of emotions. So my first tip to you when it comes to picking your own stocks is don't. Okay, look, I know you clicked on this video because you want advice on how to pick your own stocks, and and I promise that is coming. But before you go risking your money on volatile individual companies, I do just want to remind you that you don't have to purchase individual stocks in order to have your money go up in value in the long term. I've said it before and I will say it again, index funds and mutual funds are going to be the best options statistically in the long term. And that's not my opinion or the opinion of someone else on the internet. That is just the statistical fact. Most people don't want to look at balance sheets of a company and the PE ratios and the dividend and yields, and that is completely okay. And that's why things like index funds and mutual funds exist in the first place. Now, that aside, the other reason I say don't pick individual stocks yourself is you don't have to. Take some time and find a financial professional near you that can help you create a diversified portfolio that might include individual stocks as well as index funds, bonds, real estate, and other forms of investment to truly diversify yourself. Again, it's okay if you don't want to dive headfirst into the financials of different companies. But there is absolutely no shame in finding a professional, whether that be a CPA or a CFP. Just don't take investing advice from your second cousin at Thanksgiving, and definitely don't take investing advice from me or anyone else on the internet for that matter. What works for me and is best for me might not be best for you, and by simply copying someone else's investment strategy and investment portfolio, you're not only taking a large amount of risk by investing with very little knowledge, but you're also missing out on the opportunity to try truly understand what you're investing in, and more importantly, why you are investing in that thing. If you wanna buy shares of Tesla because you believe in the company and you think the product is fantastic and you feel there is still long-term potential for growth in the future, then that is fantastic and you should probably do that. But I don't want you to blindly go buy shares of Tesla just because I told you to or someone else on the internet told you to, because that is a great way to lose a lot of money really quickly. That's why it's so important to get a professional in your corner in the first place who can help you make those difficult decisions. And I think you might be surprised, it's probably not as expensive as you might think. Okay, moving on from that, how do you actually go about picking individual stocks? Because after all, that is why you clicked on this video. Well, there's a number of different methods, but my personal favorite and probably the most common is what's called value investing. Now I could go on for days about value investing and how to pick undervalued stocks and companies, but if you do want a really detailed breakdown on value investing, then I would recommend that you just check out the book, The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. This is the book that Warren Buffett, yeah, the multi-billionaire talks about all the time, and he says that it is the best book on value investing ever written, and I'd say I have to agree with him, although Warren Buffett probably knows better than I do. But basically, this idea focuses on buying companies, or stocks of a company in this case, that are undervalued, or the market price is actually below what the true value of that share is. Think of a stock like any other thing that you might buy. You probably wouldn't pay $5,000 for an iPhone because that iPhone is only worth $1,000 at most. So why would you overpay for that? And stocks are no different. Okay, well that sounds all well and good, but how do you actually find companies that are undervalued? Well, again, there are a million different ways that you can go about this and a lot of different strategies all over the internet. And I'm going to talk about the technique that I use personally, but as always do your own research because what works for me might not work for you. So 
the first thing you need to do is ask yourself, what are your goals as an investor? Maybe you are trying to produce a consistent form of monthly income, or maybe you are looking to have long-term growth and aren't really concerned about getting a consistent monthly paycheck. And the stocks that you pick are going to be very different depending on those goals and how you answer those questions. For example, if you're looking to create a consistent monthly form of income, then you're going to want to focus on high dividend paying stocks that will give you a consistent dividend check every single month, which is viewed as a percentage of the amount of money you have invested. However, if you're not really worried about a consistent form of monthly income, then you'll want to focus on growth stocks, which are going to be companies that are either large and established and have potential for consistent long-term growth or smaller to medium-sized companies that have the potential for rapid and really fast-paced growth in a shorter period of time. Obviously, that is going to come with a higher level of risk and more volatility, but these are the questions that you need to be asking yourself so that you can make informed investing decisions. Sometimes you'll hear people refer to this as growth, growth and in income, or income investments, and that's just going to depend on the type of return that you're getting on that money. So once you've decided what your investing goals are, the next step when handpicking stocks is actually going to be picking an industry that you already are somewhat knowledgeable about. Now, I wouldn't say it's as simple as the cliche advice of invest what you know, because unfortunately, just knowing that a company exists doesn't necessarily mean that it is a good investment. But once you've selected an industry that you are interested in and a little bit knowledgeable about, then you can start to pinpoint the individual companies within that industry that offer the best value value and potential for high returns. There's a few different ways to go about this, but the first step is to pinpoint the industry leaders and identify what their strengths are over their competition. What is it that makes Apple the largest computer company in the world? And why is it that Disney is able to span so many different areas of the entertainment industry? Newsflash, these things don't happen by accident and these companies didn't just explode on their own. So figure out what the core competencies are that allowed them to excel far beyond their competition. Once you've done that combo of things, a really easy metric that allows you to see the value of a particular stock is using what's called the debt to equity ratio. This number represents the total liabilities or debt of a company divided by the total shareholders equity. Wow, big words, I know. But basically, this can give you a gauge of how risky that particular stock is. If you have a lower tolerance for risk, then you'll probably want this ratio to be below 0.3. But you also can compare this to other companies in this industry and the industry average to see how that company is stacking up against the competition. The the next metric that I use that again is really easy and you can find it by just doing a Google search for any publicly traded company is what's called the PE ratio or the price to earnings ratio. A company's PE ratio is extremely important, especially when we're talking about value investing, because this number alone is literally going to show you whether a stock is overvalued or undervalued. Unfortunately, simply looking at the price of a stock is not going to give you a clear picture of how good of a deal you are getting. So this PE ratio is going to take the price and divide it by the earnings per share. And that gives you an idea of how much investors are willing to pay per dollar of that company's earnings. I know that might sound a little bit confusing, but let's say a company has a PE ratio of 15. Well, that means that investors are willing to pay roughly $15 for every $1 of that company's earnings. You can also compare this PE ratio to the industry average or directly to other competitors in the same industry. And if a stock has a low PE ratio, then generally that means that it is currently undervalued, meaning it might be a good place to invest your hard-earned money. Now, there are a million other things that you could look at in order to determine how healthy a company is, including the industry trends, long-term stability, the effectiveness of the company executives, and a bunch of other things. But to be honest, at some point, you're just going to have to go with your gut and actually invest your money. I've mentioned the study before, but remember that Professor Burton Malkiel from Princeton University proved that a blindfolded monkey throwing darts in order to pick stocks will almost almost always outperform a portfolio that is handpicked by professionals. I tell you this not to discourage you, but to remind you that you don't need to overcomplicate things and that you can spend all day spinning your wheels trying to find the best investment. But if there truly was a best investment, then everyone will be buying the exact same stock. If you feel confident in what you are investing in and you've done the surface level research on the overall industry, the debt to equity ratio and the PE ratio that we talked about earlier, then you are already way ahead of most investors, and in the long term, it's probably going to be a good investment in most cases. Just don't go day trading BitConnect or anything like that, and you will be just fine. Bitcoin! No, no, no.
not. So let me know what techniques you have used to handpick your own stock portfolio down in the comment section below. And remember, you don't need to overcomplicate things in order to see long-term growth in the stock market. Keep it simple, stay consistent, and most importantly, actually invest your money because sitting on the sidelines trying to time the market is statistically not going to be a good strategy either. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this with someone who you think could get value out of this video as well. And as always, thank you so much for your time. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.